On December 19, 1971, less than four years before the specter of MK Ultra Mind Control was first exposed to the mainstream spotlight, Stanley Kubrick unleashed a film entitled A Clockwork Orange upon the American viewing public. It was released in the UK on January 13, 1972. The film squarely tackled the paradigm of free will versus state control, in this case, the morality and dynamics of state-sponsored behavioral modification and trauma-based mind control. The film's science fiction trappings and futuristic settings are also mildly dystopian in nature. Alex, played by Malcolm McDowell, the main character, is a charismatic sociopathic delinquent whose interests include classical music, especially Beethoven, rape, and what is termed ultraviolence. He leads a small gang of thugs, Pete, Georgie, and Dim, whom he calls his droogs. The film chronicles the horrific crime spree of his gang, his capture, and attempted rehabilitation via controversial psychological conditioning. Kubrick, writing in Saturday Review, described the film as a social satire, dealing with the question of whether behavioral psychology and psychological conditioning are dangerous new weapons for a totalitarian government to use to impose vast controls on its citizens and turn them into little more than robots. In many regards, Kubrick played with the subconscious of the viewer. Malcolm McDowell's narration of the film forced a viewer to become unwittingly sympathetic to the central protagonist. This is unsettling given that the character is an inherently unsympathetic, guiltless, and violent psychopath, rapist and murderer. In fact, the design and tone of the film depicts an overall landscape that is largely metaphorically devoid of humanity. Such aspects underline Kubrick's skill as a subtle and subversive director and storyteller. The central concept of the film, and the novella it was based on, more on that in a moment, is rooted in the notion of behavioral psychology, and made manifested via the film's du ex machina, the Ludovico technique. As is often the case, the suggestion of this technique existing outside the narrative framework, in other words, in the real world, was dismissed as being nothing more than a parody of aversion therapy treatment, in which the patient is exposed to a stimulus while simultaneously being subjected to some form of discomfort. This conditioning is intended to cause the patient to associate the stimulus with unpleasant sensations in order to stop the specific behavior. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. The work upon which the Ludovico technique was based, connects closely with the activities of those involved with the Tavistock Institute and Stanford Research Institute. A number of insiders have stated that Ludovico bears a striking resemblance to less publicized techniques once practiced by the CIA. Moreover, some state the technique, name and all, is a real one. Remember that Kuber consulted with a number of key Tavistock psychologists, specifically B.F. Skinner, specialist in the aforementioned fields, and Margaret Mead, during production of 2001 A Space Odyssey, circa 1966. In this regard, the implications of A Clockwork Orange's mind control themes are disturbing. However, we should not draw all these curious lines of connectivity wholly around Kubrick, for it was Anthony Burgess's 1962 novella of the same name that provided Kubrick with much of his source material for the film. There is a detailed article by Paul Gallagher, entitled Anthony Burgess and the Top Secret Code in a Clockwork Orange, that discusses the insight and possible connections that Burgess may have had into the practice of state-sponsored mind control. The principal research source of the article is Roger Lewis's highly controversial biography of Burgess, called Anthony Burgess. Whilst the style and perspective of Lewis prompts the reader to take some of the biography with a large pinch of proverbial salt, there are highlights that raise some important questions. Lewis's book describes a meeting between the author and a British Secret Service agent. The agent allegedly told Lewis that Burgess was not totally responsible for writing A Clockwork Orange, and that British Secret Services were also involved with the book. According to Lewis, his contacts said the book was about mind control experimentation conducted by Dr. Ewan Cameron at the Allen Memorial Institute in Montreal between 1957 and 1963 and the remote neural monitoring facility that operated out of Fort George Meade. The CIA were funding controversial research programs into electronic brain stimulation. They induced exhaustion and nightmares in patients, they put hoods or cones over people's heads to broadcast voices directly into their brains, they irradiated the auditory cortex or inner ear. When patients had their own speech played back to them, incessantly, they went insane. There was a misuse of civilians in these covert operations, and intelligence on these devices remains classified. 
In the article Anthony Burgess and the Top Secret Code in a Clockwork Orange, Paul Gallagher added, according to Lewis, Burgess had been a low-grade collector of intelligence data in the Far East for the British. On return to England, he found himself in a world of spy scandals, Burgess, Philby and McLean, and double agents, George Blake, where the American cousins were questioning their bond with the Brits. A plan was hatched where Burgess would essentially front a novel that would lift the corner of the carpet and put into his novel classified material about the newfangled conditioning experiments and aversion therapies being devised to reform criminals, experiments which had wider implications for the concept of social engineering. Lewis's Secret Service contact allegedly named one Howard Roman, a languages expert and former CIA officer, as Burgess's collaborator on A Clockwork Orange. In his book, Lewis also maintained, allegedly prompted by his contact, that there was a secret code, hidden in the text of A Clockwork Orange. The capitalized lines on page 29 of A Clockwork Orange, give the HQ location of the psychotronic warfare technology, the name of the establishment is Fort Bliss. The word Bliss appears on page 29 of Burgess's novel no less than six times. It shouldn't come as a surprise that Fort Bliss crops up a fair bit in mind control literature. At the very least, I find this location telling, given that in 1945, it become home to over 100 Nazi paperclip scientists, allegedly brought there to research aerodynamics and rocketry. The Fort Bliss contingent accounted for almost 7% of all the paperclip Nazis officially brought into the US. It cannot be coincidental that for every paperclip scientist and engineer employed by the US to work in the field of rocketry, there were equally as many brought in to study pharmacology, biology, psychology, behavioral modification and mind control for the military and intelligence services. Gallagher's article also noted that one of Lewis's most harsh critic, Blake Morrison, actually appeared to corroborate some of the aforementioned in an article for The Guardian Online. The espionage theory comes courtesy of a retired security official who approached Lewis and told him a clockwork orange is full of secret code names and encrypted locations. Oddly enough, a retired security official once told me the same story. Perhaps there's something in it, but Lewis can offer no other evidence, and the likelihood of someone as voluble, indiscreet and hell-raising, as Burgess being recruited by MI5 stretches credulity. Lewis nonetheless seems to believe that espionage made Burgess rich and was the dark secret haunting him to the end. There is still a continuation of this discussion, but this video is too long, if you like it, maybe I will continue in the next episode. So, comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. Always appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.